Hello everyone. Today's how-to video will focus on demonstrating how potential users can easily create interactive forms by leveraging drag and drop capabilities available within Itential's Aut Automation Studio application. Let's get started by browsing to the Automation Studio application. As you can see on the left-hand side, you'll notice there are several sub-applications or sub-tools available, such as creating workflows, creating forms, templates, etc. Today's video will focus on easily creating some of these forms that users can interface and interact with. As you can see, there are existing forms available, but for this particular exercise, we're actually going to create a brand new one. For the demonstration today, what we're going to focus on creating today is a user input form that will contain information, information such as SSID and SSID parameters that will enable customers to request an automation to create a SSID within a wireless network. So let's go ahead and name our form. As you can see, this is a blank canvas where someone can easily drag and drop elements available on the right hand side of the screen. So let me quickly expand these options. As you can see, as part of the layout, customers have the ability to leverage tables and create those here. Schema combinations, they can create uh, containers to kind of organize all the fields together. Uh, and some of the form elements available are text inputs, text area, number inputs, checkbox, drop downs, and file upload. As part of this exercise today, we're going to be using some of these options available here. Uh, if needed, customers can also incorporate Yang models, right? Itential can actually, um, you know, federate Yang models from different systems and make those fields available as a drag and drop entity. Let's focus on today's exercise. So what we're going to do is start dragging and dropping some of these fields that we're actually going to use as part of our form. First thing being, we're actually, as part of this SSID form request, uh, we're going to need an organization name, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly just create a drop down uh, field here. Let's name it organization and let's make it required, right? Because in order for us to create an SSID, we'll need the organization name. So because this is a drop down, you have the ability to mark this as multi-select or single uh, item select. Um, as part of the options, you will notice I can easily provide static options for users to select. At the same time, Itential also supports dynamic options. And what that means is users can actually leverage all the adapter integrations within Itential in order to real-time federate information from end systems and provide those as dynamic options as part of your dropdown. In this case, because we're going to enable users to pick uh, organizations within your wireless network, what we're going to do is uh, you can use a get or a post method. For part of our exercise today, we're going to use a get method. And what you'll notice here is it automatically understands and brings in all the integrations available. So in this case, for this example, we're going to use Meraki. So we're going to want to go pull all the organizations available in your current Meraki network. So as you can note, as you can see, because I selected the get, me get method, it automatically gives me which API is available. So I'm going to choose the get organization. So once I make the API call, this is actually a real time call being made against our uh, Meraki network. And you'll notice there's one potential uh, one actual organization available. So what I can do is, because I want to make this available as a dropdown, I can further query out the response and only select the name property key. I also have an option to expose ID instead of name. But uh, for making it easier for our end customers to select the organization, we're going to select name. So when I query that data, you'll notice potential pre-sales is already selected. So let's go ahead and click back, save, and what we're going to do as a first step is going to save this form and we're actually going to preview it right before we start adding additional element. So as you notice, we have one drop down field called organization. And when I drop that down, the user will dynamically see what organization names are available for them to create an SSID in. As, as the next part of our exercise, what I want to do is I'm actually going to create a container within the form to nicely organize all the SSID request parameters. So let's call that SSID parameters here. And what I'm going to do is drop several text input boxes. And we're going to we're going to drop a number input for the SSID channel ID. 
And finally, we're going to have another text input here. So what I'm going to quickly go through is try and make this very clear to the end customer on what information I require. So for the first step, you know, for me to actually set up an SSID, I would use a uh, username and password, right? So when someone needs to log into the wireless network, this is what they provide. So let's call this username and we're going to make this required. I have multiple avail abilities to set up format. So in this case, I can say that this is this has to be a URI reference or a password, etc. Granted that this is a username, I'm just going to provide it a maximum length. And the maximum length of the username in this case is going to be 32 characters, right? And then I'll go ahead and click Save. And for the next field, let's go ahead and mark this as a password for your SSID. And I'm going to make this as a required. You'll also notice there was a password format available. So as soon as I select this, the form automatically understands. And when someone types uh, letters or numbers in it, it's automatically going to be masked for the user. And in this case, I will go ahead and pass in the maximum length of 64. So as you notice, when I'm creating and dragging and dropping some of these fields, I can also add additional constraints on top and also provide uh, tool tips when needed. All right, for the next part, this is going to be our SSID number, channel number, and we're going to say this is a required field and the maximum channel value will be 36 because I want to contain that, right? And let's make sure that please provide or ch please choose number and zero and 36 and let's save that right because we also want to provide that tooltip and finally what we're going to do is also ask the activation date so as part of this form when the user is filling it out and they want a brand new ssid to be configured in the wireless network we're going to ask him when they want it to be configured so that way the automation can configure at the right time instead of way ahead of time so in this case we're going to make this as a required field and under the format, you'll notice I have the ability to pick date and time. So the JSON form capability within Itential automatically understands the format and it will display it as part of the preview when the customer goes to select a date. And we'll actually see that in a minute when we preview this form. So at this point, um, you know, once I'm done uh, selecting the format tab, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And at this point, I think we're good with creating this form for the SSID request. So I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and save it. But at this uh, point in time, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, preview for this particular form that we just created using drag and drop. Um, as you notice, the end user will be shown this specific form, uh, not only you know during creation or request of this automation, but this form could also be embedded within an existing automation just in case someone has to review and refill um, you know, during the actual execution of the automation, right? There are times when someone changes their mind on what input parameters they want to provide as part of the provisioning. So you have the ability to utilize this uh, freshly created form in multiple places. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. As you notice, you know, this is pulling real time from your Meraki network. So if you had more organizations, that will be shown to the end users. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select that. For the username, let's call it test user. And when I go into the password, I'm providing a password that you cannot see, right? So as you notice, because we chose the format field, it has been automatically masked over here. And from a channel number perspective, um, I'm going to start typing 99. But you notice, because I provided it a constrained range, it resets back to the highest number it could possibly uh, go to. And finally, because activation is the last field that is required, at this point, when I say submit the form, it will tell me that the uh, channel number uh, has to be less than 36 and the activation is a required property. So you notice the form automatically performs these sort of validation based on your own business rules. So that as soon as I go ahead and change this to 35 and uh, change the activation and actually pick a date, uh, we're going to be able to successfully submit the form. So at this point, I will just go and select 29th, and we are done, right? So you'll notice we were able to easily create a form using drag and drop capability within Itentials Automation Studio under the JSON form sub application. So uh, that was it for today. Thank you.
and take care.